The other power of Visio is that it can work with Excel files as well. So let's take a look at that. I am going to uh, start up the swim lane timeline from the desktop shortcut. And notice that in this data source dialog, I have the ability to add files, which can be the Excel or MPP files. I can add active projects. And this is a nice way if you have um, project server, uh, you already got your projects uh, open, you've authenticated to the server, you can just add active projects. Or you also see that you can add a SharePoint site as well. Perhaps you have you know, a 2013 uh, you know, SharePoint site set up for your project. But in this case, I'm going to go to Add Files. And uh, we're going to switch from MPP to Excel. And I'm going to go to my Demos folder. And notice I have uh, Demo 8 uh, portfolio status. I'm going to open that up before we generate it, just so you can see what's inside. Now, the swim lane timeline only needs two fields, um, a name field and either a start or a finish field to generate a swim lane timeline. That's all it needs. Now, um, there are some uh, fields that have particular meaning. And these are all described in the quick start guide that comes with the download uh, or also in the you know, full user's guide as well in the appendix. Um, but percent complete, baseline start, baseline finish for visualizing your baselines, uh, unique ID and unique ID predecessors for visualizing dependencies. And in, in, in this case, these are uh, projects. Each row is a project. And um, there is some project metadata that's associated with that. We also have some special fields that the swim lane timeline uses. One is the visibility short name. Now this can be, you know, sometimes uh, people have very long verbose names and they want to use a, you know, just abbreviation for it to show up in the swim lane timeline. Or in this case, we actually use the formula uh, that concatenates the name and the percent complete in the, in the short name. But there are other fields in here like who owns the project, you know, what's the project type, the project status, discretionary level, Etc. And we read in all of these. There's budget data. There's uh, dates when things were planned and when they actually, you know, executed. Um, and so let's go ahead and point the swim lane timeline at this. Now this is an Excel file that doesn't have any work breakdown structure. You could put an outline numbering scheme into your Excel files. Again, that's described in the documentation. Uh, but in this case, it says, okay, how do you want to group these if we don't know, you know, to do it by your parent-child relationships? Um, and I'm going to say, let's group these by project status, which is one of the fields that was in the source. Notice it's read in all of those fields, and we can uh, group by any of them. Uh, I can apply a filter here if I wanted, right, right out the get-go. Maybe I've got a you know, 5,000 row Excel, and I know I only need to look at, you know, 50 of them, I can uh, uh, filter on those right from the get-go. And then a, the style, and again, this is a new feature for those of you that have been using the Swimline timeline in the past. We've added the ability to apply a style right away so that when you, you know, point to an Excel file, you can just apply the style and it generates it, uh, applies your filter groups uh, your color palettes, your fonts, etc., all in one go. But in this case, I'm just going to use the default style. And it's generating it now by project status. So, boom, I see my projects um, by the uh, project status. So, which ones are on track, which ones are complete, late due to predecessors, and late. And all of that data was, was in there. Um, now, just to show you some of the power, though, of the swim lane timeline to dynamically work with that data, let's say I wanted to regroup this. I don't really want to look at it by project status. Maybe I changed my mind. I want to group these by owner. You simply go to the group drop down, and now I've grouped them by owner. Or maybe I want to group them by project type. Or maybe I'd like to sort the tasks within the swim lane by their start date. So I can see kind of a cascading what's happening first. Or maybe I want to sort the swim lanes themselves by start date, and now I get a full cascade of, uh, of when things are happening in the order that they're going to be happening. 
Now, if you remember in the Excel spreadsheet, I had some cost information. We can show that. So, for example, if I wanted to know, you know, how much am I spending here, uh, you know, my top five um, tasks, I can go ahead and, or projects. Um, in the Add Show menu, I have access to a Summary Fields option. And those values that are cost or you know number values like work and duration, uh, you can do summations of those. And let's say I want to look at what I budgeted. Um, then I have a format very similar to, to Excel formats, and you can create your own formats if you'd like on your data. So I'm going to say by millions of dollars. And then what did we actually spend by millions of dollars so far on those projects? Uh, I can say show this. And now if I look down here, I can see my top five projects. I've got the 5.4 million that were budgeted, but we've already spent 6.5 million. And then we also uh, show, based on the uh, time intervals, uh, you can see, and this is uh, um, not weighted. I just want to be clear about that. This is just you know, taking if, if this project here in particular is you know, uh, 5 million, uh, it, it would uh, see what proportion of that five million uh, uh, in this task is in this month, what portion is in that month. So it just kind of gives you a, a general idea. Uh, at some point, we may add weighting to this, but uh, yeah. And those of you that are using the product, keep your wish list items coming. We, we do appreciate your feedback. Um, so. Just a little bit more about the swim lane timeline um, environment. Um, if you look at the top left, you can see there is a logo. Um, that logo, you can override that logo with whatever you want. Um, in fact, you now have the ability to hide that logo. Um, you can show and hide it or select any JPEG or PNG file. And the nice thing is you do it once, and from then on, every swim lane timeline, uh, report you generate, it will use the logo that you've specified. Other um, items here, we have our title or heading at the top, and then there's a subheading. And in the Add Show menu, you have the ability to, to turn those on and off. So maybe when you go for the, you know, the official report that you're going to share with everybody, you're going to turn off those subheadings. But it's kind of nice to be able to see as you're working, you know, what you've grouped by, what you've sorted by and uh, what you filtered by. Now another feature that we have, and I'm just going to turn off the summary uh, fields for a minute here, is the ability to do a multi-level grouping. So right now we're just grouping by project type, uh, but maybe I'd like to see this group by type and then by status. So I'll apply this multi-level group, and now I'm seeing, okay, in my top five, these are the projects that have been complete, or these are late due to predecessor, these are on track, uh, et cetera. So you have the ability now to do a uh, multi-level grouping. And I'm looking at this data, and maybe I would like to see them colorized by their project status. So in the Add Show, I'll go to our conditional format, um, and I have some already made up here. So for Demo 8, if I wanted to colorize these by project status, and then we get the legend down at the bottom, uh, or maybe I want to uh, colorize these by what's critical and what's mandatory. And uh, you'll see here, um, I get a different colorization onto the same data. So. It's kind of nice that depending on the audience you're going to present to, you can quickly change between your conditional formatting that you've set up um, to uh, reach the audience that you're going to be working with. Now, just one um, quick note about the conditional formatting view. There's two pieces of this puzzle. One is there's an XML definition file uh, where you specify what field you want to evaluate, what uh, values they are, and then what you want to do. Um, and then there's the um, legend, which is actually a Visio shape. So you can you know, use Visio to create the legends and give it the same name as the XML definition file. 
and it's brought up along with it. So that's just a short introduction um, with the Excel files. 